And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, in it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. Now let's go into Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Read verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now let's go into Revelation chapter 22, verses 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So sisters and brothers, we're doing reading the commandments like this because the world have gotten away from the commandments and they have gotten away from the access to salvation. And the access to salvation is keeping God's commandments. It is required. So when people tell you that you don't have to keep the law, those people are trying to take your crown away from you. But getting on with the lesson, sisters and brothers, this lesson is titled, The Future Kingdom Identified by the Past. The Future Kingdom Identified by the Past. The Lord's going to give us a snapshot of what the kingdom is going to look like when he set it up on this earth. But we're going to see who is around the kingdom and what it looked like. But all of this, we have to look to the past to find out what the future is going to look like. So we're going to be able to look right into the throne room where the Lord is going to be sitting on his throne and see who's there with him. But we're going to start this in Revelation, the first chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 9. So this is what I like about God, sisters and brothers. He showed you everything. If you don't know anything, that's because you never bothered to look. Revelation 1 and verse 9. Go ahead. 
the rep I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, uh -huh. and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God <clears throat> and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. So right now, we can straighten out one thing. They were telling you that John was ex exiled mm -hmm. in the isle of Patmos. Right. No, John was there for one reason. That's to get the word of God and the uh, uh, testimony of Jesus. Go ahead and read. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day uh -huh. and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. When he said he was in the spirit on the Lord's day, sister and brother, this is talking about the day of the Lord. This is the time, the day when the Lord is going to come. He's talking way in the future. He's not talk talking about on the Sabbath day. He's talking about in the time when the Lord is going to come. So the Lord projected John's mind way into the future, even beyond us, and to see the kingdom on this earth. So he was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and he heard a great voice of a trumpet. Go ahead. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, uh -huh. the first and the last. Go ahead. And who that seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, unto, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. He said, now... Uh, what I show you, I want you to write it in a book and send it to all of these churches. But we're not dealing with the churches at this time. But skip down to verse 19 and go ahead. Write the things which thou hast seen and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter. He said, now write the things which thou have seen and the things which are and the things which are going to be hereafter. So he wants you to write about what's been, what is present, and what is now. So what we're going to do, sisters and brothers, we're going to look at what's going to be in the future. But we're going to look to the past to find out about it. Let's back up to Revelation, the fourth chapter. Go over to Revelation, the fourth chapter, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Revelation 4 and 1. The Lord have everything written, sisters and brothers. There's no reason to guess about anything. And everything in this book, is explained, all you have to do is search it out. Revelation 4 and 1. So we're going to look at this vision that John had. Go ahead and read. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, uh -huh. and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Now, he didn't say the things which must be hereafter is going to be in heaven. He said a door was open and he heard a voice mm -hmm. said, come up here. Because he, he was coming into the vision of the Lord just like the Lord brought Ezekiel into his vision. So he can show him what's going to be hereafter, mm -hmm. thing that's going to be in the future. Go ahead and read. And immediately I was in the spirit. Uh -huh. And behold, a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne. He said immediately I was in the spirit. And he said, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. John, talking like this was in heaven, but we know that this is not heaven. Once we get through, we're going to show you where it's going to be. But this is, everything was in heaven to him, because John saw the whole nation of Israel in heaven. And that's not to be. But go ahead and read. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. So he saw one that's sitting on the throne, sister and brother, in heaven. And it told you what it looked like, but go ahead and read. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, uh -huh. in sight like unto an emerald. Now, there was a rainbow around his throne. Now, we are going to find out why that rainbow was around his throne, sisters and brothers. Because we need to look at this. But before we do that, let's go into Ezekiel. <clears throat> I mean, in doing that, brother, let's go into Ezekiel, the first chapter. Because the Lord showed himself to Ezekiel. And Ezekiel chapter 1, and we're going to start reading that verse 1, because Ezekiel saw a vision of the Lord. And let's see what he saw around the Lord. Ezekiel 1 and verse 1. Ezekiel 1 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river Chabar, that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. Go ahead. In the fifth day of the month, 
which is the fifth year of King Jehoiachin's captivity. Uh -huh. The word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzai, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Chabar, and the hand of the Lord was upon him. This is when Ezekiel, when the Lord was getting ready to dispatch Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. So he appeared to him. Go ahead and read. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north. Go ahead. A great cloud and a fire enfolding itself. Uh -huh. And the brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. That's what it looked like to him. It looked like it was a great big whirlwind, but a big ball of fire. Mm -hmm. And so out of the midst of the fire, go ahead and read. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. Uh -huh. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. Now, these are four living creatures. We're going to deal with them in depth. In a minute, but skip down to verse 22. Verse 22, and go ahead, because we not we'll pick up the creatures later. Verse 22, and go ahead. And the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creature was as the color of the terrible crystal stretched forth over their heads above. Now skip down to verse 26, and go ahead. And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne uh -huh. as the appearance of a sapphire stone. Uh -huh. and, the, and upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above it, uh, above he, upon it. So he's showing the throne and a man sitting on it. But we know that's the Lord. But go ahead and read. And I saw as the color of amber, uh -huh. as the appearance of fire round about within it, from the appearance of his loins, even upward. Go ahead. And from the appearance of his loins, even downward. Uh huh. I saw as I saw as it were the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about. Go ahead. As the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain. Now it had brightness around about him as the appearance of a cloud of a bow. That's a rainbow mm -hmm. that is in the cloud in the day of rain. Go ahead. So was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face. Uh -huh. And I heard a voice of one that spake. Now, he showed Ezekiel the same thing that John saw. He saw this boat, the appearance of a rainbow. So let's see where, this, uh, 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 where did this rainbow come from and why it's there. Because we're going to see that when around the, in the throne room. We're going to see all of this. But we're going to see where it came from and, where, and why it was there. In order to do that, we have to go to Genesis, the sixth chapter. Genesis chapter six. This is the time, sisters and brothers, when God had got to the point where this world had got so wicked until he couldn't deal with it no more. And we're almost there again because man's thoughts is just wicked at all times, continuous. Genesis six. <clears throat> Chapter 6, and we're going to start at verse 5. Genesis 6 and verse 5. Because I'm waiting on you because I, was, I keep being told that I'm going too fast. 6 and 5. Okay, go ahead. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and, the, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Lord knows we've gotten back there, just about there already again. Mm -hmm. The thoughts of man's heart. Is almost of his mind is almost evil continually. Cause all look at all the evil and wrong that's going on nowadays. Go ahead and read. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And he was sorry that he made man. And this man was, and he was grieved mm -hmm. because he made this man. But go ahead and read. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, uh -huh. both man and beast, Go ahead. and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for repenteth me that I have made them. Uh -huh. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So the Lord looked at all his evil on earth. He found a righteous man in it. So that was Noah. So he said, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Because he said, he repented him, and he was going to, Destroy everything, man included. We ain't going to have nothing left. But skip now to verse 13. Verse 13 and go ahead. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. Uh -huh. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. So he said, I'm going to destroy everybody and everything that go with it. But except I found you. Go ahead and read. 
Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shall thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. Now, he said, make you an ark. In other words, make you a big boat. Now, I want you to fix it so it won't leak, because I'm going I'm to drown everything. Skip down to verse 17 and go ahead. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth uh -huh. to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. Uh, so I'm going to bring a flood and drown everything except for you and, and the animals that you brought on the, on the ark, because we're not dealing with that in this lesson. Now let's go into Genesis, the seventh chapter, and we're going to start reading at verse 5. Genesis 7 and 5. Okay, go ahead. And Noah did according unto all that the Lord commanded him. Uh -huh. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. Go ahead. And Noah went in and his sons and his wife and his son's wives with him into the ark because of the waters of the flood. So now the Lord brought the flood and he took Noah and his family inside of the ark. Skip down to verse 11 and go ahead. And the 600th year of Noah's life in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. Uh -huh. And the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights. That's a whole lot of rain, sisters and brothers, but the Lord intended to ground everything. So skip down to verse 23, verse 23, and continue. And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground, uh -huh. both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of the heaven. Go ahead. And they were destroyed from the earth, and Noah only remained alive, and they that were with him in the ark. Uh huh. And the waters prevailed upon the earth in 150 days. So the Lord dropped, put the water on the earth, and he let it stay there a long time, because can't nobody tread water for 150 days, sister and brother. The birds didn't have no water, a, a light on, no trees or nothing. So even the fowls in the air that fly, they couldn't fly forever. They finally got tired, got tired, had to come down, and was drowned too. Now let's go into Genesis the eighth chapter. Genesis eight, and we're gonna start at verse one. Genesis eight and one. Go ahead and read. And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. Uh -huh. And God made a wind to pass over the earth. And the waters assuaged. Now, so the Lord brought the water down. Go ahead and read. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped. Uh -huh. And the rain from heaven was restrained. Now skip down to verse 13 and continue. And it came to pass in the 601st year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth. Uh -huh. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. So the Lord done dried everything up now. So it's time for everybody to come off the ark. Skip down to verse 18. Verse 18, and go ahead. And Noah went forth, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives with him. Uh -huh. Every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kinds went forth out of the ark. So now, the Lord brought them everything that he had created across the flood with Noah. And that's why I know, sisters and brothers, that the dinosaurs and all those great beasts was not in Noah's creation. Otherwise, they would have been on the ark too and he'd have brought them across. But we don't see them. So the Lord brought everybody across. Everything that he created, he brought every species across. He didn't leave one. Now skip now to verse 9 because he said everything that he had created, he brought in. So we're going to start at chapter 9, brother. Genesis chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9, and we're going to start at verse 1. Genesis 9 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. So now, if you didn't come out of one of these sons of Noah, you don't exist. People come up with all kind of other people that suppose a set of people in the, in the Garden of Eden, and they come up with some woman they call Lilith and all this. I tell you, whoever they were, they didn't get across the flood. Only Noah, his wife, his sons, and his son's wife came across the flood. Everybody else was drowned. So skip down, to, and the Lord told them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. But so skip down to verse 8 and go ahead. And God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, uh -huh. And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. Now see, the Lord is a covenant God. 
You have to go into an agreement with him. He says, so I'm going to establish my covenant with you and your seed after you. Well, that covers everybody, don't That's right. Go ahead and read. And with every living creature that is with you. And with every living creature that is with you. Go ahead. Of the fowl, uh -huh. of the cattle, go ahead. and of every beast of the earth with you. Uh -huh. From all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. So my covenant is going to be not only with man, it's going to be with every beast, mm -hmm. every animal. Go ahead and read. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Go ahead. Neither shall there be any more Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. He says, so I ain't going to destroy the earth no more with, with, no, with a flood. There ain't going to be no more drowning. Go ahead and read. And God said, this is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you. This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you. And every living creature that is with you. And every living creature that is with you. For perpetual generations. That's for every generation. That's nonstop. Right. Ain't no break in it. Go ahead and read. I do set my bow in the cloud. I do set my bow in the cloud. And it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. Now I'm going to set this bow in the cloud. And it's going to be a token of the covenant that I have made between me and the earth and everything that exists in it. Go ahead and read. And it shall come to pass uh -huh. when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. Go ahead. And I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, uh -huh. and the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. See, man, it got so wicked, maybe the Lord, if he hadn't made that covenant, he might have drowned us again by now. But he said, but I'm going to set this boat, this rainbow in the air when it started raining. And when I look up on that boat, I'm going to remember my covenant I made with you, then I won't drown y'all no more. Go ahead and read. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, uh -huh. that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. So the Lord said, look, I'm going to have to have me a reminder. That means that this man is going to get to the point where he feels like drowning us again. So I'm going to have me a reminder, and that bow is going to be a reminder. And, and I mean that bow is in every generation. Mm -hmm. That's why we went to the last sister and brother when the, when the uh, kingdom was on the earth. He's still going to have some type bow around his throne to remind him that I had to drown these people and they ain't going to do it no more. Go ahead and read. And God said unto Noah, uh -huh. this is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. And this, this rainbow is the token of my covenant that I made with you and every living creature on this earth. It's going to remind me not to drown the whole earth anymore. So that's why when it rains, you see a rainbow. I look at it, and what comes in my mind, I'm looking at something that God is looking at right now. Because he said, I'm going to look at it, and it's going to remind me. So that's why we have a rainbow around the throne of the Lord to remind him not to drown us anymore. Now let's go back to Revelation, the fourth chapter. And we're going to see what else is around this throne room. Because sisters and brothers, the Lord had it written, so he want us to know about it. If he didn't want us to know about it, it wouldn't be written in here. But what this is doing is that it's, this is showing us the future and how the Lord prepared for the future in the past. Now we're going to read Revelation, the fourth chapter. Uh, 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 fourth chapter, and we're going to read one verse, verse four. Revelation four and verse four. Revelation four and four. Okay, read it. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. Uh -huh. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, uh -huh. clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. So now, he had 24 elders. These seats are thrown, sisters and brothers. And these are rulers. Why? Because every one of them had crowns of gold on their head. You know, like Paul, when, in, in uh, 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, he said, look, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. Now I have a crown laid up for me that I would could receive in that day. And not only me, but all those that love the coming of the Lord. So this crown... Because this crown represents rulers, sisters and brothers. So, but we're going to see who these 24 elders are. Because people think that they're in heaven right now. And we're going to show you that is not the case. They are not 
in heaven. So the question I want to ask is who are they and where did they come from? These guys that's sitting on thrones with crowns on their head. But let's go back to 1 Chronicles, the 24th chapter. Because people will argue you down that look, uh, them 24 elders in heaven right now, is that the case then? They can't be God because the Bible says there but two in the Godhead. And they can't be angels because angels are serving spirits. They don't sit on thrones. They don't rule nothing. They are commanded by God. But we're going to investigate them and see where they came from and what they represent. Second Chronicles, First Chronicles rather, the 24th chapter. First Chronicles chapter 24, because we need to know about this. This ain't no great mystery. Being that everybody's been taught all of these generations about somebody's going to heaven, then it's easy to say, well, they're in heaven right now. No, we're going to see. We're going to start at verse 1. First Chronicles chapter 24 and verse 1. Okay, read it. Now, these are the divisions of the sons of Aaron. Uh -huh. The sons of Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. You know, because Aaron was the priest. Said, brother. The book said he was the high priest, but we know Moses was the priest over him. But still, we're going to go with what it says here, that Aaron. So these are the sons of Aaron. These are the ones from which the priesthood came out of. Go ahead and read. But Nadab and Abihu died before their father uh -huh. and had no children. Uh -huh. Therefore, Eleazar and Ithamar executed the priest's office. See, now, Nadab and Abihu, Abihu the two oldest sons, mm -hmm. they sacrificed with strange fire before God, and fire came from God and killed them. So all these guys got to come out of the two younger brothers. Go ahead, Ithamar, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, Eleazar and Ithamar. Go ahead and read. And David distributed them, both Zadok of the sons of Eleazar, and Ahimelech of the sons of Ithamar, according to their offices in their service. Uh huh. And where and there were more chief men found of the sons of Eleazar than of the sons of Ithamar. Go ahead. And thus were they divided among the sons of Eleazar. There were sixteen chief men of the house of their fathers, and eight among the sons of Ithamar, according to the house of their fathers. So these two younger sons are the ones that the priesthood came out of, came through, because it. Two older ones died before they had any children. So out of these two came the priests, all of them. Keep reading. Thus were they divided by lot, one sort with another. Uh -huh. For the governors of the sanctuary and the governors of the house of God were of the sons of Eleazar and of the sons of Ithamar. So who were these guys divided among in their priesthood? These guys was the governor of the house of God. So the temple that the Lord is going to reside in, these guys are the one that's going to govern it, sisters and brothers. They're going to govern the sanctuary. Don't nothing go on in the sanctuary or the house of God without these guys' permission or direction. And he's going to start to name them. Let's skip down to verse 7. Verse 7. And we're going to name all of these guys, sisters and brothers. Verse 7. Go ahead. Now, the first lot came forth to Jehoram, uh -huh. the second to Jediah. Now, listen now. He's counting them. The first one to Jehoram, the first one to Jediah. Go ahead. The third to Haram, uh -huh. the fourth to Saram. The, the third to Haram and the fourth to Saram. So pay attention to these numbers, but keep reading. The fifth to Melchijah, uh -huh. the sixth to Majorim, Go ahead. the seventh to Hakaz, uh -huh. the eighth to Abijah, the ninth to Jeshua, the tenth to Shekaniah, uh -huh. the eleventh to Eliashib, the twelfth to Jacob. The 13th to Hupa, the 14th to Deshebib, the 15th to Bilgah, the 16th to Emmer, uh -huh. the 17th to Hezer, the 18th to Assis, the 19th to Pethiah, the 20th to Jehazekel, the 1 and 20th to Jachim, the 2 and 20th to Gamu, uh -huh. the 3 and 20th to Deliah, the 4 and 20th to Meaziah. So now, these are the 21, these are the 24 elders, sisters and brothers. Not only do we know, where they came from, we even know their names. That's right. The Lord gave you their name. These are the ones that are going to govern the temple. Read the next verse. These were the orderings of, orderings of them in their service to come into the house of the Lord according to their manner under Aaron their father as the Lord God of Israel had commanded him. So these are the governors of the sanctuary, sisters and brothers. 
These guys, this is their job when they when you come into the uh, 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 future kingdom that's coming. The people don't understand. Everybody have been given jobs. If you make that first resurrection, and you will be a ruler. That's why Paul said he had a crown laid up from him, a crown of righteousness. But it's the same thing, a crown, if you continue in your righteousness. But to show you that these could not be angels, because angels are not going to run the world to come. Let's go into Hebrews, the second chapter. Sometimes you have to point these things out because people have a belief, and people like to preach their mind and not the word. And that's a bad habit, especially among Israel. Gentiles, they can't speak. Uh, 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 they speak it. I don't lay so much at their feet. It's because uh, we are not teaching them anymore. So they're going on their own. But the Lord is going to hold his preach feet to the fire, sisters and brothers. Hebrews, the second chapter. Hebrews, the second chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 5. Hebrews 2 and 5. The reason I'm showing you this is to let you know that these guys are going to be rulers. They're going to rule the sanctuary of the house of God. Verse 5, go ahead. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. And he's telling you right now, this is what Paul is telling you. The world that's coming now, the, the kingdom, the, the, the millennium period when Jesus ruled this world, that is not put in, sub, in subjection to the angels. The angels ain't going to run this thing, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. But one in a certain place testified, saying, uh -huh. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Go ahead. Or the son of man that thou visitest him? The what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that you uh, even pay in, him an attention. Look what he said. Go ahead and read. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Uh -huh. Thou crownest him with glory and honor. Uh -huh. And didst set him over the works of thy hand. You made him? With glory, you, you, uh, uh, crown, you made him, and you crowned him with glory and honor, and you set him over the works of your hand. Sisters and brothers, everything that exists is the works of the Lord's hand. He said, this man is going to be set over it. Go ahead and read. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. All is absolute. We don't have it right now, but we know when we make the cut, we will have everything under us. We will be ruling right along with the Lord, and we're going to show you that. So you put all things under him, and everything's under his feet. Go ahead and read. For in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. I mean nothing, sisters and brothers. So everything that the Lord created is going to be under us, sisters and brothers. Everything. Now let's go into Revelation, the 20th chapter. Did we finish that no. eight chapter verse? Go ahead, finish that eight, eight verse. Go ahead. But now we see not yet all things put under him. And that's what he said. And you, and you read that, so we did. So we see not all things on us. If everything was subjected to us, sisters and brothers, you know what we, we could do? We could tell the sun, look, you're too hot. Cool off, sun. It cool off. You can tell the day, you ain't long enough. Give me some more hours. And it would do it. Just like Joshua. When he was fighting against his enemies, he turned around and told the sun, stand still, and told the moon, don't you move, until he had vanquished all his enemies. We will have that power, sisters and brothers. He was working through the power of God, but we will have that power when the day comes. So now, this power is going to be given to us, but not to angels. Now let's go on to uh, Revelation, the 20th chapter. Revelation, chapter 20. See, all of this, sisters and brothers, is overlooked because everybody's trying to rush you off to heaven. And nobody's paying anything, any, any attention to what's written in the Word of God. And that is where the world is messed up. Nobody reads the Word of God. Everybody t teaches you their feeling and their opinion. And the Lord will not tolerate that. Revelation 20, and we're going to start at verse 4. Revelation 20 and 4. Go ahead and read. And I saw thrones. And I saw thrones. And they sat upon them. Uh-huh. And judgment was given unto them. I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. They didn't stand in judgment, right. sisters and brothers. They was the judges. Go ahead and read. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded uh -huh. for the witness of Jesus 
and for the word of God. Go ahead. And which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads uh -huh. or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Look, please, God. This people, a lot of people died during the great, going to die during the great tribulation mm -hmm. because they're going to refuse the mark of the beast, sisters and brothers. But a lot of people are dealing with it right now, but they're dealing with it spiritually in their mind, mm -hmm. and they practice it. It's like one of the closest things to the mark of the beast right now in this modern day right now is Sunday. But we know that there's going to be a physical mark. And the Bible says the mark so you can see, but we have everybody running around now telling them they're going to put a computer chip in your arm. I don't think the Bible didn't say that, sister and brother. But everybody's scared. We have people afraid to go to the doctor. They might put a computer chip in me. Sister and brother, if something like that was to happen, it wouldn't even start until the great tribulation starts. And the great tribulation can't start until the Pope move into the temple. And he can't move into the temple until the temple is built. If there was going to be a chip put in you, which the Bible don't uh, uh, quali quantify, it's not qualified. All it says is going to be a mark. So those that refused the mark and, worshiped, and wouldn't worship the beast, they was killed, sisters and brothers. But what's going to happen? They're the ones that's going to rule with Christ along with those of us that makes this cut and the people that got killed when this thing started. But go ahead. What verse? Verse 5. Go ahead. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. Now, these people, they're in the first resurrection. Read that first prior verse again and read into it. Okay. Verse four, 4 and 5. Okay. Start it all over again. Go ahead and read. And I saw thrones. And they sat upon them, uh -huh. and judgment was given unto them. Uh -huh. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, uh -huh. and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their forehead Go ahead. or in their hands. Uh -huh. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years, sister and brother. These are the people that are going to be in the first resurrection. And you know, when you're talking about being a mark put on you in your head and your forehead and in your right hand, it's going on right now, preparing you for it every Ash Wednesday, sisters and brothers. So just like every Ash Wednesday, I see a physical mark. I expect to see a physical mark during that time. And they will know. I saw an example, sisters and brothers, with what, with what happened in Ethiopia. The Ethiopian treated the Philosians so bad until some of them had the mark of the cross tattooed in their forehead to say, I'm a Christian, I'm not a Philosia. Because the Philosia from, uh, from uh, Israelite, from the tribe of Dan. So I, saw, uh, I saw an example of that. The Lord used to show things. All you got to do is look around. They show some of the people with the mark of the cross tattooed in their forehead. He said, but these people that will not receive that, they're going to live and reign with Christ a thousand years. Go ahead and read. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. Uh -huh. This is the first resurrection. So now everybody that didn't die right in the eyes of God, they're not going to come up in the first resurrection. Go ahead and read. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. Uh -huh. On such the second death hath no power. Go ahead. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So these people are going to rule with Christ a thousand years. So we know that uh, just like these people that's going to be sitting on throne and judgment going to be given unto them, in other words, they're going to be the judges, also the 24 elders, they have their job. It's just, the Lord, like, just like the Lord told David, you're going to be king over Israel forever. That's why he called himself king of kings and laws of laws. He told the 12 tribes, y'all going to be rulers and judges over each one of the tribes. The 12 apostles, he told that. That's why he gave that parable of the talents, the one that, that uh, turned his talents to ten, uh, 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 that, that turned his ten talents and got ten more. He said, "I'm gonna make you rule over ten cities. One that did five, I'm gonna make you rule over five cities." He's talking rulership, sisters and brothers. And in another lesson, we have a lesson to show you that the saints gonna run this world.
The saints are going to do it. But the rest of the dead live not until a thousand years is over with. That, what was that, verse uh, six? Verse six. This is the first resurrection. So if you didn't die right, God gave you a break. He gave you another thousand years before he raised you up and maybe punished you. Because everybody in the white throne jury is not going to get cut off, sister and brother. But these guys are going to rule with Christ a thousand years. Who? Everybody that made the cut. Now let's go into 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter. Because the angels are not going to run this thousand year millennium period. Jesus is going to run it. And his saints are going to run it with him. So if you want to be one of the ones that rule this earth for a thousand years with Jesus, what you got to do is do what you need to do to make that first resurrection. And you can do it, sisters and brothers. It's written in the book. Read about it and obey. Keep God's commandments and statutes. And if you do that, God will give you eternal life. It's all that simple. I know. We just, that's why we read the commandments. That's why when the young man asked Jesus, what should I do to get eternal life? He said, good master. First thing Jesus told him, don't call me, you know, uh, uh, able one good. And that's the Father. That's the God in heaven. But if you will enter into life, keep the commandment. Anything said after that is irrelevant. Keep the commandment. No matter what the man said, if he keep the commandments, he going to get Eternal life in the right side of the kingdom. Why? Because Jesus said. You can't add nothing to it or take nothing away from it. So if you are in that first resurrection, then you're going to run it. And you're going to rule, sisters and brothers. 1 Corinthians 6, and we're going to start at verse 2. 1 Corinthians 6 and 2. Go ahead and read. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? Ain't that, and he's telling you right here. The saints going to judge the world. Go ahead and read. And if the world shall be judged by you, uh -huh. are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matter? Go ahead. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? Uh-huh. How much more things that pertain to this life? Now look, then the Lord said man was created to be over the works of all his hand? Of all his, uh, uh, on the, uh, over all the works of his hand? Did he say that? Yes, sir. Angel is the works of God's hand. God created them. He said, you're going to judge the angels. I don't know when. But if God said we're going to do it, then we're going to do it, sister and brother. So these 24 elders, they are rulers. But they are dead because they are the sons of Eleazar and Ithamar, the sons of Aaron, sister and brother. But when they come up, they're going to have their job already set for them like David know what his job going to be and the apostles know what their job going to be. They are dead. But when they come up, all of these guys are rulers. That's why it's going to help you reign. You're going to reign with Christ a thousand years. So now we know where the 24 elders came from. They come from among the sons of Aaron. And they're not going to get there, sisters and brothers, until the first resurrection. Now let's go back to Revelation, the fourth chapter. So when we get into the kingdom, we're going to see these guys. When we get into the kingdom, we're going to see the rainbow around the throne of Jesus. We're going to see this, sisters and brothers. And we're going to know where we are because we have already been told right now what we're going to see in the future. Now, Revelation 4, and this time we're going to read verse 5. Revelation, the fourth chapter, and verse 5. Because the Lord is laying this thing out, and he wants us to know what's in the future. That's why he told John to write it down in the book. Things that are, things that were, things that are, and things that are to come. I want you to write it down in the book. Why would he want this written down? Unless he wanted us to see this, sister and brother. The Lord wants us to see this. And God ministers, those ministers have to put it on the table so the people will see it. Now, Revelation 4 and verse 5, because we know where the rainbow came from. Now we know where the 24 elders came from. Let's read verse 5 and see what else we have here. Verse 5. Okay, read it. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings 
and thunderings and voices. Uh -huh. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Now, also around the throne room, in the throne room, we saw seven lamps of fire, is it which also are the seven spirits of God. Let's see what they are. We're going to go into Zechariah, the fourth chapter. We're going to run these seven spirits of God down, sisters and brothers, because the Lord want us to know about them. Had he not want us, if he didn't want us to know about them, they would not be in the Bible. Zechariah chapter 4. Because Zechariah said not only was John transferred his mind, taken to the Lord's day, Zechariah's mind was in the day of the Lord. So was Zechariah. In fact, most of the prophets saw. And like right now, we not get that kind of vision, but through the word, we're seeing now what's going to be in the future. Zechariah 4 and verse 1. Zechariah chapter 4, and we're going to start reading at verse 1 because this is all future that we're looking at. Go ahead and read. And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is waking out of his sleep uh -huh. and said unto me, What seest thou? Go ahead. And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick all of gold, uh -huh. with a bowl upon the top of it, uh -huh. and his seven lamps thereon. Now he, he saw a candlestick, all of gold, and a bowl on top of it with the seven lamps thereof. These are the seven lamps we just read about in the fourth chapter of Revelation. But go ahead and read. And seven pipes to the seven lamps, uh -huh. which are upon the top thereof. Go ahead. And two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side thereof. Now I'm just going to read a little more so we'll know that this is talking all future. Now you got two olive trees. Mm -hmm. You got the seven lamps, which are the seven spirit of God. Now you have the two olive trees. But now we're going to see what these guys are. Go ahead and read. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, uh -huh. What are these, my lord? Go ahead. Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, uh -huh. Knowest thou not what these be? Go ahead. And I said, No, my lord. Uh huh. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. Go ahead. Saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Uh huh. What art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, grace, grace unto it. Now, this is Zerubbabel. This is the guy that built the temple during the time of Ezra and Nehemiah. And this guy, Zerubbabel, he's a, he laid the foundation of it, and he going to finish it. But go ahead and read. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, uh -huh. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall also finish it. Go ahead. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. Uh-huh. For who hath despised the day of small things? Go ahead. For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. Look, sisters and brothers, we're going to rejoice because Zerubbabel is going to build a temple that Jesus and, uh, and the 24 elders are going to dwell in. And we're going to rejoice because we've been dealing with small things. So we're going to see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel. Go ahead and read. With those seven, with those seven, they are the eyes of the Lord, uh -huh. which run to and fro through the whole earth. Now, these are the same seven spirits, the same seven lamps. These are the eyes of the Lord. These are the ones, sisters and brothers, that reports back to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Like when you go to Job, the first and second chapter, it tells you that the sons of God showed, reported to God, and Satan showed up also. That's right. And he asked Satan, God asked Satan, where are you been? He's I've been running to and forth in the earth and walking up and down in it. Well, these guys are doing the same thing because these are the ones that are watching everything, sisters and brothers. These are the seven spirits, which are seven lamps. But then let's find out what they are, what they really are. Let's go back to Revelation, the first chapter. Revelation chapter one. Because we mentioned about the two olive trees, sisters and brothers. If we had kept reading, we would have seen that those are the two witnesses that's going to be here during the Great Tribulation. Everybody's known about when you read this Bible, sisters and brothers. So now, we're going to go and pursue these seven lamps, which are the seven spirits of God. 
and which are the seven, which are the eyes of God also that run to and fro in the earth. So who do, who is the one, who do all this? Who takes care of this kind of business that keeps an eye on everything? Revelation 1, and we're going to start at verse 4. Revelation 1 and verse 4. Okay, read it. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, uh -huh. grace be unto you in peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. Uh -huh. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Now he's telling the grace be unto you uh, from Jesus and also the seven spirits, sisters and brothers, which is before his throne. Skip down to verse 10 and read it. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day uh -huh. and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Now, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me of a great trumpet, so John wanted to see this. Skip down to verse 12. Verse 12 and go ahead. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. Uh huh. And being, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Uh huh. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. So he saw seven golden candlesticks, and he saw one. Like the Son of Man. But this is the vision of Jesus. Skip down to verse 16 and go ahead. And he had in his right hand seven stars. Uh -huh. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. So we know this is Jesus, but what we want to know is who are these seven stars? Skip down to verse 20 and go ahead. The mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Uh -huh. And the seven candlesticks, which thou sawest, are the seven churches. So, sisters and brothers, these same seven, these seven stars, they are the seven spirits of God. They are the seven lamps that are around the throne, sisters and brothers, because they represent enlightenment. That's what a lamp represents. But still, these are the spirits of God. These are the seven angels that go to and fro on the earth, and they report back to God. And even Satan, as wicked as he is, he has to report back too because still he's an angel, even though he's a fallen and a tainted angel. So now we know who these seven lamps are. They are the seven angels that the Lord used to watch this whole earth and report back to him. Brother told me one time, well, brother, God don't need no angels to watch the whole earth. I said, whatever God need is not for me to try and psychoanalyze what God need or what he don't need. It is up to me to read what he had written. And this is our problem sometimes. We keep trying to psychoanalyze God and the apostles instead of just reading the word like it is. So he said, these are seven eyes of God that run to and fro on earth. And they watching everything, sister and brother. So now we know who these seven around the throne. These are God's watchmen. That's why he said his eyes. Now let's go back to Revelation, the fourth chapter, and see what else we can pick up that's going to be around the Lord and around his throne. Revelation 4, Revelation chapter 4. This time we're going to start at verse 6. Revelation 4 and 6. So we can keep an eye on what the Lord wants us to see. Just like the Lord got these angels running around keeping an eye on things that he want to see. He's watching it all, sisters. It's just like in the days of Abraham when the Lord went down to, Saul, to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, hey, wickedness that come up to earth. Now I come down and investigate it, didn't he? Right. So I'm going to come down and see if it's what I was told. By who? By one of these angels, sister and brother. God made an, a personal appearance to this earth. He visited Abraham, but then he sent two angels down there to take care of Sodom and Gomorrah. So the angels are servants. They report. 24 elders are going to be rulers. And they were the governors of the sanctuary. And they're going to be governors of the sanctuary that Jesus is going to dwell in. But now let's go back to Revelation, the fourth chapter. Back to Revelation, the fourth chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 6. Revelation 4, and we're going to start reading at verse 6. Okay, go ahead. 
And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto a crystal. Uh -huh. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full uh -huh. of eyes before and behind. See now in the midst of the throne and round about the throne, he said, look, that there was four beasts full of eyes before and behind. I mean, eyes everywhere. But go ahead and read. And the first beast was like a lion, uh -huh. and the second beast like a calf. Go ahead. And the third beast had a face as a man, uh -huh. and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Now, we're going to show you that each one of these beasts had four faces, but John just looked at the face, just named each one of the face like it was on one beast. But these are the same, sisters and brothers. We're going to show you how many heads, faces they had, but go ahead and read. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about them. Uh -huh. And they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night, saying, uh -huh. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Now, these four beasts, they had six wings, sisters and brothers. That's why I know that there was a typo in Ezekiel. But then when you read Ezekiel close, you'll find out that those, one that we're going to look at, had six wings. So let's go back. To Ezekiel, the first chapter. And you got these four beasts. They look, they was falling down and hollering, holy, holy, holy. Before God Almighty. Ezekiel, the fourth chapter. And they're right around the throne, sisters and brothers. So we're talking about what's around the Lord's throne. We're talking about something that we're going to see when we come up in that first resurrection. I don't know what the people are going to see in the last resurrection, but I know what the people are going to see in the first resurrection. Because not only are you going to see it, sisters and brothers, if you make that first resurrection, you're going to have a part in the ruling with Christ for a thousand years. And I want to go for that, sisters and brothers. I don't, want to, I don't want to take a chance of standing in judgment because you may or may not make it. But if you come up in that first resurrection, then you can say, I am saved. Revelation 1. And verse 4, uh, Ezekiel, well, I'm sorry, Ezekiel, the first chapter and verse 4. Ezekiel chapter 1, and we're going to start at verse 4. Okay, go ahead. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, uh -huh. a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself, and the brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Go ahead. Also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. Uh -huh. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. Now, these are the four living creatures. They had the likeness of a man. Go ahead. And every one had four faces. Every one had four faces. Go ahead. And every one had four wings. Every one had four wings. But I know that this is, it should have been six wings, sisters and brothers. Because this is the same one we saw around the throne. Go ahead and read. Skip to 10. Uh, uh, skip down to verse 10 and go ahead. As for the likeness of their faces, uh -huh. they four had the face of a man uh -huh. and the face of a lion Go ahead. on the right side. Uh -huh. And they four had the face of an ox uh -huh. on the left side. Uh -huh. They four had also the face of an eagle. Now look, isn't this the same one that was named in Revelation? But John named like each one of them uh, had one face. But now we know that each one of them had four faces. And John probably saw the face of the lion facing him, and he saw the face of an eagle, he saw the face of a man, and he saw the face of an ox. But these all were, had four faces, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. Thus were their faces, uh -huh. and their wings were stretched up upward. Now we're going to show you, it stretched up, but these are two wings up. Go ahead and read. Two wings of every one were joined one to another. Two wings of every one that joined one to another. Go ahead and read. And two covered their bodies. And two covered their bodies. How many wings is that? No, two wings up, two oh. wings touching, and two that six. cover their body. Right there, that tell you that's six, six wings. wings. But go ahead, what verse is that? We just finished 11. Go, uh, so now skip down to verse 18. Verse 18 and go ahead. As for their rings, there was so high. That ring, that means wings, sisters and brothers. Because, you know, I don't know what happened in Ezekiel, but so, the print got messed up somewhere here. So as, the, as for their wings. They were so high. Go ahead. They were so high that they were dreadful. Uh-huh. And their rings were full of eyes round about them four. Didn't they say that in Revelation? Yeah. That their eyes front and back. Go ahead and read. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went by them, 
And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. So we're not going to deal with the wheel, but we're dealing with these four living creatures, sisters and brothers. They had wings, six wings, and eyes in the front and in the back. So now we're going to go and see what they're called. In Revelation, they call them the four beasts. In Ezekiel here, they call, call them the four creatures, but they have a name, sisters and brothers. And what we're going to do is we are going to pursue this name. Let's go into Ezekiel, the 10th chapter. Because we, unless we find out who they are or what they are, we can't find out where the Lord added them to his entourage. But we're going to find out. Ezekiel chapter 10. Ezekiel chapter 10. Because if the Lord didn't want us to know this, it wouldn't be here. Like people say sometimes, y'all read a whole lot of scripture. Of course, because we're going to let the Bible interpret the Bible, sisters and brothers. How am I going to read one verse and tell you what God wants us to do? We got to read it. Ezekiel 10. Ezekiel 10. And we're going to start reading that verse 1. Ezekiel 10 and verse 1. Go ahead. Then I looked, and behold, in the firmament, that was above the head of the cherubims, there appeared over them as it were a sapphire stone. Oh, so they called cherubims, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the same thing that John saw, but go ahead and read. As the appearance of the likeness of a throne. Uh -huh. And he spake unto the man clothed with linen and said, Go in between the wheels, even un un under the cherub, and fill thine hand with coals of fire from between the cherubim, uh -huh. and scatter them over the city, and he went and in in my sight. Go ahead. Now the cherubim stood on the right side of the house when the man went in, and the cloud filled the inner court. Uh -huh. And the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub uh -huh. and stood over the threshold of the house. And the house was filled with the cloud, and the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory. So because the Lord traveled with these cherubim, he didn't go nowhere before. Even when Jesus was on the cross and even talked about the Father, he said he rode up on the chair. Mm -hmm. So wherever the Lord went, these cherubim was right there, these four. So now he went up and he stood on the right side of the house of the Lord. Go ahead and read. And the sound of the cherubim's wings was heard even to the outer court uh -huh. as the voice of the Almighty God when he speaking. Now we know now what to call them, don't we? We call these that Revelation called four beasts. Ezekiel called four creatures. We'll know that they are called cherubim angels, sisters and brothers. We know that. So we're going to find out now, when was these cherub angels added to Jesus' entourage? Let's go back to Genesis, the second chapter. Back to Genesis, the second chapter. Because when we get into the kingdom that's going to come, Jesus' kingdom, we're going to see all of this, sisters and brothers. And we ain't going to be shocked because we're going to be looking for them. And we're not going to be frightened because we're going to be looking for them. Genesis 2 and verse 7. Let's go back to the creation of this man. 2 and 7. Go ahead and read. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground uh -huh. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Go ahead and read. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Uh -huh. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So now when the Lord dug this man out of the ground, he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. He didn't put a soul in him. You are the soul. Then he had trees to grow out, of the ground for food, but he had two other trees in the garden, sisters and brothers. That's the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the Lord didn't want you to communicate with one of these trees. Skip down to verse 16. Verse 16 and go ahead. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. So he could have eaten of the tree of life. We're not talking about consuming with your mouth. We're talking about consuming with your mind, mm -hmm. sisters and brothers. Every tree of the, God, of, of, uh, 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 of the garden, thou mayest 
freely eat. In other words, they could have eaten from the tree of life and lived forever. But go ahead and read. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, uh -huh. thou shalt not eat of it. Go ahead. For on the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, I don't want you eating of that tree. Because the day that you eat of that tree, you are going to die for sure. Ain't no guessing. Ain't no maybe. God don't give you puzzles. He gives you facts. Acknowledge him in all your ways. Hallelujah, and God will. 